Recent genetic analysis of Denisovan DNA shows that Native Americans inherited their lip shape from Denisovans, our sister species. In 1980, a Buddhist monk found the right half of a fossilized hominid jawbone in a remote cave on the Tibetan Plateau. An analysis of ancient proteins, extracted from the fossil, shows that it belonged to a member of the mysterious ancient human group known as Denisovans. It is the first Denisovan specimen found outside the remote Denisova cave in Siberia. What did these ancient humans call themselves? We don't know, but they surely didn't call themselves Denisovans, which comes from a cave named after a Mr. Denisov. So how we pronounce this word is as important as tomato or tomato, in my humble opinion. Denisovans are an extinct sister group of Neanderthals, and are known from fragmentary fossils from Denisova cave in the Altai Mountains. Their genomic legacy is present in several Asian, Australian and Melanesian populations, which suggests that they once might have been widespread. The mandible provides the only direct evidence of the Denisovans outside the Altai Mountains. The analysis shows that the mandible belonged to a hominin population that was closely related to the Denisovans from Denisova Cave. While scientists could not find any traces of DNA preserved in this fossil, they managed to extract ancient proteins from one of the molars. The ancient proteins in the mandible are highly degraded, and clearly distinguishable from modern proteins that may contaminate a sample. Attached to the mandible was a heavy carbonate crust, and by applying U-series dating to the crust, the team found that the mandible is at least 160,000 years old. This minimum age makes the mandible comparable in age to Denisova II, chronologically the oldest Denisovan fossil, that is currently known from Denisova Cave. The mandible represents the earliest hominin fossil on the Tibetan Plateau. It is at least 120,000 years older than the oldest known Paleolithic sites in the region. Denisovan introgression into present-day Tibetans, Sherpas and neighboring populations, includes the Denisovans version of the gene that provides high-altitude adaptation to hypoxia in humans who inhabit the Tibetan Plateau. The mandible demonstrates that Denisovans or Denisovan-related populations occupied the Tibetan Plateau and successfully adapted to high-altitude hypoxic environments long before the arrival of modern Homo sapiens. A team of researchers then produced physical reconstructions of Denisovans, based on patterns of chemical changes in their ancient DNA. In many ways, they resembled Neanderthals, but in some traits, they resembled Homo sapiens, and in others they were unique. The scientists first compared DNA chemical change patterns among the three human groups to find regions in the genome that were differentially methylated. Next, they looked for evidence of what those differences might mean for anatomical features, based on what's known about human disorders. By doing so, we can get a prediction as to what skeletal parts are affected by differential regulation of each gene, and in what direction that skeletal part would change. For example, a longer or shorter femur, or a wider or narrower jaw. To test this method, the team applied it to two species whose anatomy is known, the Neanderthal and the chimpanzee. They found that roughly 85% of their trait reconstructions were accurate in predicting which traits diverged, and in which direction they diverged. Then, they applied this method to the Denisovan and were able to produce the first reconstructed anatomical profile of the mysterious human cousins. The researchers identified 56 anatomical features in which Denisovans differed from modern humans and or Neanderthals. 34 of these features are in the skull. For example, the Denisovan skull was probably wider than that of modern humans or Neanderthals. They likely shared Neanderthal traits, such as an elongated face and a wide pelvis. One of the most exciting moments in the research happened when scientists discovered the Denisovan jawbone in Tibet. They quickly compared this bone to their predictions and found that the jawbone matched perfectly. Without even planning on it, researchers received independent confirmation of the ability to reconstruct whole anatomical profiles, using DNA that was extracted from a single fingertip. These findings show that DNA can be used to reconstruct anatomical features, including some that do not survive in the fossil record. This work is also a step towards being able to infer an ancient individual's anatomy, based on their DNA.
Surprisingly, Denisovans also somehow managed to cross the so-called Wallace line after 600,000 years ago, and later interbred with anatomically modern Homo sapiens moving through the area on the way to Australia and New Guinea. Genetic evidence, pointing to their hybridization with modern human populations has been detected, but only in indigenous populations in Australia, New Guinea and surrounding areas. In contrast, Denisovan DNA appears to be non-existent or at very low levels in current populations on mainland Asia, even though this is where the Denisovan fossil was found. This pattern can only be explained if the Denisovans had succeeded in crossing Wallace's line, one of the world's biggest biogeographic barriers, which is formed by a powerful marine current along the east coast of Borneo. Wallace's line marks the division between Eurasian mammals to the west, from marsupial-dominated Australasia to the east. In mainland Asia, neither ancient human specimens, nor geographically isolated modern indigenous populations have Denisovan DNA of any note. This indicates that there has never been a genetic signal of Denisovan interbreeding in the area. The only place where such a genetic signal exists appears to be in areas east of Wallace's line, and that is where interbreeding took place, even though it means that the Denisovans must have made that marine crossing. This would throw out the idea that only modern humans had seafaring ability. The discovery of another enigmatic human species, Homo floresiensis, the so-called hobbits, confirms that the diversity of archaic human relatives in this area was much higher than previously thought. The morphology of the hobbits shows they are different from the Denisovans, meaning we now have at least two, and potentially more, unexpected groups in the region. Knowing that the Denisovans spread beyond this significant sea barrier, opens up all sorts of questions about the behaviors and capabilities of this group, and how far they could have spread. The key questions now, are where and when the ancestors of modern humans, who were on their way to colonize New Guinea and Australia around 50,000 years ago, met and the Denisovans. Intriguingly, the genetic data suggest that only male Denisovans interbred with modern human females, indicating the potential nature of the interactions, as small numbers of modern humans first crossed Wallace's line and entered Denisovan territory. What did you say? More recently, scientists have produced a world map of Denisovan and Neanderthal ancestry in 120 diverse modern populations. The analysis proposes that Denisovan admixture into humans occurred about 100 generations after Neanderthal admixture. Scientists collected their data by comparing known Neanderthal and Denisovan gene sequences across more than 250 genomes, from 120 non-African populations. The analysis was carried out by artificial intelligence, using a machine learning algorithm that could differentiate between parts of both kinds of ancestral DNA, which are more similar to one another than to modern humans. The results showed that individuals from Oceania possess the highest percentage of archaic ancestry, and South Asians possess more Denisovan ancestry than previously believed. This reveals previously unknown interbreeding events, particularly in relation to Denisovans. Oceania is a geographic region that includes Australasia, Melanesia, Micronesia, and Polynesia. Australasia is a region which comprises Australia, New Zealand, New Guinea, and some neighboring islands. During the low sea levels of an ice age, Australia and New Guinea become one large landmass. Scientists have developed methods that can disambiguate the locations of segments of Denisovan and Neanderthal ancestry in present-day humans. They applied them to 257 genomes, from 120 diverse populations, among which were 20 individual Oceanians, with high Denisovan ancestry. In Oceanians, the average size of Denisovan fragments is larger than Neanderthal fragments, implying a more recent date of Denisovan admixture, in the history of these populations. Researchers documented more Denisovan ancestry in South Asia than expected, based on existing models of ancient human history, reflecting a previously undocumented mixture related to archaic humans. This map shows the proportion of the genome inferred to be Denisovan ancestry in non-Africans. The color scale is not linear, to allow saturation of the high Denisovan proportions in Oceania, shown in bright red, and better visualization of the Denisovan genome proportion in South Asia. Western Eurasians are the non-Africans least likely to have Neanderthal or Denisovan genes. Therefore, the interactions between modern humans and archaic humans are very complex, and perhaps involve multiple events.
Now, the information you have been waiting to hear. In a genome study of over 6,000 Latin Americans, scientists identified 32 genes that influenced facial features such as nose, lip, jaw, and brow shape. Surprisingly, one of these genes appears to have been inherited from the Denisovans. Scientists compared genetic information from the participants with characteristics of their face shape, quantified with 59 measurements from photos of their faces in profile. They found that a gene that contributes to lip thickness was linked with genetic data found in Denisovans, providing a clue to the gene's origin. The face-shaped genes may have been the product of evolution, as ancient humans evolved to adapt to their environments. Possibly, the version of the gene determining lip shape that was present in the Denisovans could have helped in body fat distribution to make them better suited to the cold climates of Central Asia. The gene was then passed on to modern humans when the two groups met and interbred. In this drawing, face profile features show genome-wide association. The drawings indicate the features for which the traits were measured in the individuals. The chromosomal region showing strongest association to a trait is indicated above each peak. Curved lines in the middle of the figure connect the previously unidentified face morphology region to their associated traits. This is the first time that a version of a gene inherited from ancient humans is associated with a facial feature in modern humans. In this case, it was only possible because scientists moved beyond Eurocentric research, modern-day Europeans do not carry any DNA from Denisovans, but Native Americans do. It is one of only a few studies looking for genes affecting the face in a non-European population, and the first one to focus on the profile only. One of the newly discovered genes influenced nose pointiness. The researchers found that this gene also affects nose structure in mice, indicating a broadly shared genetic basis among distantly related mammal species. Research like this can provide basic insights and help us understand how humans evolved. The findings could help understand the developmental processes that determine facial features, which will help researchers studying human evolution. What do you think about this information? Please leave your thoughts and theories in the comment section, no matter how crazy. And thanks for watching the video, sharing, and subscribing to the channel.